here with Jerry Lorenzo for episode two of our Q&A series. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, so first off, I'm sure everybody wants to know what's up with the fourth collection. Uh, fourth collection is coming. Um, <laughs> super excited about it. It's um, taking me longer than anticipated to, uh, to get it out. Um, we we're adding some new categories for the first time. Uh, we'll be releasing a shoe around holiday. Um, we're adding denim to the collection and we're, we're doubling um, the ready to wear part of it. Um, so there's so many different ideas and so many different um, materials and fabrications and sourcing and trying to get all these things in at the same time to be able to tell a concise story and deliver to to everyone at one time. It's, it's taken a little bit longer, but um, you know, this is fear of God and we don't, we're not on a fashion calendar and um, the, the product and the story is ready when it's ready and um, it'll be ready soon. I've heard a lot about the shoe and I was like trying to find a picture online or something, but it's no, nothing not gonna, yet. You're not, you're not gonna find it. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's exactly what you would anticipate a Fear of God shoe to be. I mean, if you've kept up with the brand and you pay attention to the footwear, uh, whether it was, you know, the Rick shoes from the first shoe or like the Tim's from the second collection or the desert boot that we pulled um, and used in the third collection, there's definitely um, a language there that is kind of consistent with uh, who we are. And so you can expect um, something derivative of, of, those, of those shoes. That's cool. So we just wrapped up our Fear of God RCP pop-up shop with the resurrected vintage tees. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have a question here from Seymour Clay 8. He wants to know, what is the honest price of the vintage tees before you print Fear of God on them and sell for 600? I noticed some people were <laughs> very happy with the price tags. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to, to shed some light. I mean, these tees are super rare and they're super hard to find. Um, you know, I've got guys in Seattle, I've got guys um, kind of across the country that have kind of helped me to uh, curate these uh, t-shirt um, collections that we launched at 424 now here at um, RSVP. Um, and just the, the blunt, honest truth is some of these tees cost 90 bucks, some of these tees cost $350, um, And after you, paying for the resources to find them and you're paying for the tees and you're repurposing, tagging them, labeling them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the margin for any type of profit is actually really, really slim. Um, and to be honest, I'm, Fear of God is still a very, very small company and to, to justify each t-shirt, whether it was 90 or 350 and price them as such, it's just really easier to give them all the same price um, and let the kids come in and pick and gravitate to whatever tea it is that they like um, without knowing as far, without worrying about price and knowing that, hey, this is the price, so. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Lil KJ wants to know, did you anticipate the huge cultural impact your brand created or was it something that came as a surprise? Um, no, nah, I mean, I, I never anticipated any type of um, reaction. I mean, I think it's, it's going to sound corny and cheesy and cliche when you're, when you're finally doing something that you love and that you really believe in, there's not, an, there's not like an expectation that's attached to it. You know, you're just kind of like doing what you're doing. For yourself. So, yeah, you're just doing what you're doing and you love it and you appreciate every kid that comes into RSVP just to say hi. You know, it's a super um, humbling thing, you know, that, that keeps you going and going. Um, and it, and for me, um, like today's experience and kids coming in, and this is only the second time that I've done something like that, um, just because our, our brand is direct to consumer online, so we don't have these uh, walls where we get to interface with people a lot. Um, you know, these, these are the times that just kind of give you the energy to um, take forth connect, forth collection to the next level and continue to push the brand. 
um, because you're seeing how it's uh, inspiring kids in ways that you um, didn't anticipate. Yeah, that's awesome. So with that being said, Rosh.0 wants to know, are you more angry or flattered by other brands copying the style of your brand? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it, 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 in all honesty, at first, um, you're super angry, and then you sit back and realize that, hey, if that's not happening, maybe I'm not doing something right. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's, you know, it comes with it. Um, you know, it, it can be frustrating at times when uh, your brand starts to look like brands that are knocking you off and all of a sudden you're in this category of brands that are knocking you off instead of being in your own category. Um, but that's still kind of like, after the frustration kind of subsides, you know, you still have to find your truth in knowing where your inspirations come from. And, and standing by your long tee that you released two or three years ago and, and maybe it looks kind of cliche and trendy and height beastie now, but it's, it still represents a, a strong communication point of what you're trying to say. And you can't leave your ideas for the sake of leaving your ideas. You have to kind of um, stand by them and reinvent it in a way that still speaks the same language. Okay, at Back to Jorge wants to know, did you ever have a moment where you thought the brand just wasn't going to work? Um, I had a lot of moments where, you know, my, my background is retail. You know, I worked retail 10 to 15 years, like, you know, morning to night and then grad school after that. And I worked retail even when I had like a full-time corporate job, like I worked retail on the weekends. And um, I never thought I would be doing fashion, although I, I loved it. Um, and I had like desires to be working in sports and be an agent, et cetera, et cetera. And I didn't realize that I had, I had amassed this uh, understanding of people and what they like to wear and how clothes fall on certain individuals, et cetera, et cetera. So I've had all these skills that I didn't realize that I've always had just from working retail. So to go back to say, um, in those times when I felt like the brand wasn't working and I was going downtown LA trying to figure out how to make a pattern and what that cost and why do I have to give this guy 15 grand and I've never seen it before and now I'm down to like just a thousand bucks in my account. I never thought that it wasn't gonna work because I knew what I was doing. You know, I knew what people wanted. And it, I, you know, I just kind of knew it, like I know my name and I never doubted that. So, um, so yeah, there were definitely times where it got tough and I didn't understand the business, I didn't understand production. Um, People were lying and stealing, and that's just all a part of it. But if you really know what you're trying to say and believe in it, um, you should never doubt what it is that you're trying to do, whether it's going to work or not. At Roberto Perez wants to know, since you have many friends in fashion, such as Virgil, which you just mentioned, and Kanye, do you ever get inspiration or help from them for your collections, or have you helped them on theirs? Um, be, being able to be in like the circles of like a Don C or like a Virgil or a Kanye, you know, I, I look at myself as like all the kids that came in here today. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the one kid out of all these kids that gets, gets to work with these guys. You know what I mean? I'm the one kid that, hey, if, if one of us can make it, what are we going to do with this opportunity and what are we going to do with, with these relationships? And, um, you know, some, somebody asked me today, like, hey, why don't you and Virgil ever collab? I'm like, collab? Like, Virgil has, given, has opened up doors for me that are beyond a collab of leveraging our ideas on one another. So when you're around that level of creativity and, and, um, uh, and speaking of Kanye genius, you, you obviously you're going to... Um, you're going to take on some of those ideas, you're gonna take on some of the, the way that they think and the way that they attack and the way that they're on the, um, on the uh, offensive. 
you know, um, you know, and I humbly hope that I can give them, you know, whatever it is that they can take from me in the same way. You know, it's it's more of a continuous conversation versus a specific, hey, you should use that color or maybe use that. It's just a continual conversation of culture and where it's going. So that wraps up our second episode of the web series. Thanks for joining us both here and for the pop-up. Thank you for having me.